Hi everyone, so earlier today I did a live stream on this 8200165, so the issue with this, it had a charging issue, um, and then uh, had an SMC reset issue, and after we fixed that, we plugged it in, the fan spins fast right away, and we get no CPU vCore, no Alsys power good, no PM PCH power okay, things like that. So, I uh, ultrasonic the board because it had some junk uh, under the CPU, and after I did that, it still was dead, it still displayed the same symptoms. So. Normally, if you have a sensor issue, if you're thinking the fans go fast right away, you pro you're probably thinking a sensor issue. Now, that is not the case. If you have a sensor issue, your fans are going to go fast. I mean, they're going to go slow before they go fast. And when you plug in this board, let's look on the microscope at the fan. Um, switch over to microscope view. So if we plug this board in, it goes fast right away. So you'll see this in a second here. There is no ramp up. It just goes right to fast and if we measure CPU V core right here um, so we're gonna measure CPU V core right here so I'm gonna put my meter somewhere where you guys can see this actually you know what? I'm gonna use the oscilloscope just because that's easier and in sight of the camera so here's our oscilloscope right here I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see that there's our screen um, let's measure on V core so if we measure on CPU V core we get nothing there's nothing there there's no voltage present now I decided to check a few other things so one of the things I checked was PP1 VO5 SO now when I measure that that's that's our main PCH power right we actually get some voltage here right w it's not enough we get 0.7 volts now 0.7 volts is not nearly enough for the circuit to work now this board is kinda strange because there's a rail that is shorted that is way back in the power sequence that I really didn't think we'd even get fan spin if it's shorted so this is our, our PCH power. Now, let's have a look at the schematic and see how the chip that switches this FET gets its power. So, let's go over to the uh, display capture here. Where's display capture? So, where's the schematic? So, this is the, the regulator right here. So, U7600 is the regulator for PP1V05SO. And this is going to switch... Where is it here? So, let's find it here. So, this is going to switch... Q7630 right here. This is our FET. This is going to switch Q7630 to provide power to our PCH. Um, actually, it's going to go through a resistor, then to our PCH. Now, let's look at how this chip gets its power. So, wait wait a second here. Where is it? U7600 right here. So, let's look at how this gets its power. So, looking at the schematic right here. Here's U7600. We see the voltage in, the V5 I N. Now, when I assumed that voltage was coming into this chip, so I replaced this chip, since it had 0.7 volts on output, I and, and this is an S4 rel, if our fan is spinning, we know we're in an SO state. I never decided to check the voltage in because I'm figuring this is needed for power. This is going to be online if there's a... Um, if the board is turning on, if the fan is spinning, and if we get some something on output, I was thinking more of an issue somewhere around this chip. So I thought, first I thought the chip was dead. Typically with buck controllers, if they're reading funny, like 0.5 volts, 0.7 volts, the chip is just not going to be switching right. It's messed up internally. Fix it, and it's going to be perfect. So after I saw that, I said, okay, maybe the CPU is pulling it down. It had corrosion under it. Let's ultrasonic it. Ultrasonic it at 70 Celsius for four minutes aside. That did nothing. Then I said, well, maybe the FET somehow is screwed up. Um, I replaced the FET, same exact thing. Everything else around it looked perfect. And then I was checking something. I said, you know what, let's just check the voltage on PP5, uh, PP5VS4 RS3. I actually didn't check voltage, I checked diode mode to ground. And what do we know? We have a partial short on this line. Now, this is really, really strange because with this, this is an S4 line. It, I didn't think we would get this far in the power sequence to SO if this is shorted. So let's see where this comes from. So PP5V, PP4, PPS4. PB5VS4 RS3, where is it here? Um, let's see. PP5V underscore S4 RS3. So this is going to come from, where is it here? It's not there. This powers a bunch of stuff in the system. So look at all the stuff it powers. This, yeah, this this is a major rail in the system, and that makes it honestly very strange. See, this is responsible for powering our 5VSO switch. Um, it is responsible for just ton tons and tons of things. So if I measured 
output on this. So let's f first let's plug in a working board. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you the output on the uh, coil for for um, our power to the PCH on a working board and the dead board. So here's the dead board. Let's plug in our charger here. So our dead board. Wait for the fan to spin up. Come on, fan. There we go. Here's our dead board. See that? It's low. It's at about uh, 0.7 volts. And you see there's really, so let's look before the inductor. There's really no switching going on. It's just a constant voltage. Um, not being really told to switch. It's just sending pulses through it. So this is a sort of working board. This has an issue on with boot up. It's not, it's a fully working board. It'll power up, show backlight. So we know it's mostly good. It just has an issue on boot up that I haven't figured out yet. So this is going to be our mostly working board. And let's have a look at what the um, power to the FET looks like, or the power coming out of the FET looks like. And then we'll look at the power after the inductor. So we're going to do the same thing here. We'll just watch it because it's going to take a minute to come online. Uh, and I don't have a fan plugged into this. So what I'm going to do, this is power after the inductor here. Um, come on here. All right, so we'll zoom out. All right, see the switching? See the pulses? That is how it should look. That is pulsing. So how this is going to work, it's going to take the voltage from PP bus G3 hot or PP5 VRS3 in this case, and it's going to switch that. It's going to switch that in pulses. Now, how an inductor works is we're going to have, and my oscilloscope just froze. So th uh, the transistor is going to pulse. So the transistor is going to turn off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. And out of that inductor is going to come a nice, well, out of the inductor and out of these two capacitors right here is going to come a nice 1.5 volts for the, the PCH. So this is, wait a second here. Um, Alright, all right, so this is before. See that? That's the switching. That's what we should have. That, that That is normal. That means the circuit's working properly. It's switching. And on this side, yeah, it's going to go through the inductor and right should be on these capacitors. Hmm. Yeah, well, this is what, okay, see how it's smooth? See that? No more switching. That's how it should be. That's going to be normal. Um, and on our other board, we really don't have that. Now, I never thought that the source voltage to the chip might be low because you saw on the schematic how much stuff 5V RS3 powers. And usually when something like that, with that, you're not going to get fan spin. And that was really, really strange. So let's go back to this here, to the microscope view. So what I'm going to check is, so here's our, our um, capacitor for source on this chip, is right here. If I check this to ground, wait a second here. We have a short. So let's see what we have in ohms. I like measuring ohms better than diode mode. We have 24 ohms to ground. Now that is trash. That is not good. 24 ohms to ground on a rail like that is not normal by any means. So let's measure this on a working board and see what we get to ground. So this is a working board. We get... Over 2 kilo ohms. Let's keep going up we get 14 kilo ohms to ground. So we have a major problem on that rail. There's something going on in that rail pulling it to ground. Um, this board did have some liquid damage, but I don't want to go hunting like that. So what I'm going to do, I am going to inject a little power here. First, I'm just going to give the board just another look over. Let's look, sin but see, since this goes to so many things, it could literally be anything on this rail. It could be just so many things. So what I could start doing is taking off everything. I could start plucking the board of each of its components, but that yeah, you have to be really lucky for that because my luck, what's going to happen is I'm going to take everything off and it's still not going to work or it's going to be the very last thing that I take off that's going to be the problem. So we're going to trust our DC power supply to show us where the problem is. Okay, we're going to go ahead and solder our wire right over here. So here is a nice capacitor to put this wire on. Let's go ahead and grab our wire. Let's grab our iron. We get a little flux down there. Probably said about 20 times how I really like this new flux today. 
I emailed Amtech earlier, but they haven't gotten back to me, so that's disappointing. I complained about 559, that they changed formula earlier in the week. That's probably why. So, we have uh, soldered our wire here. We have about one volt on the power supply. We, we're going to start low, I don't, and just in case it's going to the PCH or something. I don't want to murder the PCH too much. And yeah, we're going to have to up our voltage here because that's not pulling anything. That's pulling less than an amp, and nothing is going to get hot at less than an amp. Come on, let's go on the... There we go. So we're going to go to 2 volts. 4 volts. Oh, this is going to suck to find. Well, shoot. Went a little bit too high at 6 volts, but it should be okay. That's still in tolerance, hopefully. And with the wonderful help of FLIR Infrared, hopefully we will find this short. And hmm... Something's getting to 160, 170 degrees over here. Let's see where this is at. Let's see where that's getting to be 170 degrees. 170 degrees on a MacBook motherboard. Imagine that. 159. Hmm. Hello. Hello. Imagine that. Burning 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 board wonder what you do so let's go over to the schematic now let's have a look at that so what do you do I wonder what you do little chip what does little chip do? Is little chip important? I think so. You are going to be... U8005, and you have a lot of stuff for 1PP1V5SO. And that just happens to be our rail that is low. Look at the schematic. 1V05 PCH HSIO switch. Sounds important. Time to get rid of this component and replace it with a better one that isn't shorted. Little flux there. Come in with our hot air. Heat it up a little bit. Come on, I know you want to come off the board. I know you're living your life. There we go. That's off the board. Put another tiny little bit of flux down. Fresh solder down. Put another little tiny dab of flux. As you could never have enough flux in life. Flux will make everything better. Here's our replacement. Come on, flow into place there. Well, that's good enough for me. And let's check what our resistance on this rail is again. So we had around, what was it, like 25 ohms? And now we have, that's interesting. We have 129 ohms, and that's probably because that chip is burning hot and it'll increase over time. That's still way too low. 129 ohms is still way too low, but my guess is because that chip is burning hot, that the resistance is going to be low. That's why it's best not to turn stuff on when it's burning hot.
Unless there was something else partially shorted on this line. And this board was partial liquid, partial drop. It looked like it was put through an ultrasonic cleaner for liquid at one point in time. And this really isn't a fix. It's a band-aid if it's all corroded up. And yeah, it had failures from related to the liquid damage. But it also had drop. And the drop was the most recent failure that was not turning on. Apparently, th the way the battery connector was off the board, it fell off whatever from the drop. I don't really believe that, but that's what they said. I think it was more of doesn't turn on. Let me try everything I can. Let's plug it in. What do we get? Fan spin? Anything? Hmm. We still get nothing, which is really, really bizarre. And now, instead of zero volts on PP1V5SO, we have no voltage, which is really strange. Okay, let's look. Is the chip soldered bad? Is the chip we put on dead? Let's see, this is the one we just replaced, and that is soldered perfectly fine. Let's check resistance again right here. Let's check resistance. First, I'm going to clean this away. Get out of here. And we still have 130 ohms, which is still way too low. So more injecting voltage. We're going to see what else gets hot, because I think we have a compound issue here. And that's definitely what it seems like right now, given the fact that it is still not working. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we should be in the kilo ohms on that. Anything below, yeah, the 100 ohms is way too low. So it tells me something else is still screwed up on this line. And this is the kind of thing that can happen when you have one a drop and then one component fails. It can take some other ones out at the same time. It's kind of rare that it happens that way, but I think this is a prime example of what can happen. So we cleared one short, and this is going to be an even harder one to find because it's 100 ohms to ground, which is a partial short. And partial shorts are never fun to find. Partial shorts are the worst. And especially if you don't have FLIR, it is even harder if you have a partial short. At least I have the FLIR, which helps me find it. Alright, let's apply some power here. Five volts. Um, here's our FLIR. I don't want that to touch ground because it's going to explode. And I don't see anything on this side getting hot. And we know this goes to both sides of the board. So we're going to flip this board over and hope it doesn't short on here I may just tilt it up and it just the alligator clip just came unplugged and was our fan seriously spinning whoa shoot yes our fan was spinning so if we put voltage on this line our fan does spin and that's strange so We have a little hot spot right over here. It's about 92 degrees. And when I, I wish I, I wish the FLIR had um, capabilities where it can capture what I'm seeing. So I th somewhere right over here. So somewhere right over here, something's getting warm. Not hot, but warm. So let me clip this on to some place that I can. Okay, so something here is getting slightly warm like 90 degrees right here our pp3 v42 regulator couldn't do that though i don't think it could which is really strange because that's the only thing getting remotely warm here but the pp3 v42 regulator did look like it had liquid damage but that makes zero sense why that would be getting hot let's see is it getting hot let's 
put a little alcohol on it. That, unless there's voltage leakage to it. Yeah, it does look like it's getting a little bit warm. But does that even have... Yeah, that has nothing, no lines to that. That just has DCN. Let, let me measure something on here. So does PP3V42 somehow come online when you have 5VSO injected? And it does, the 2.75 volts. That is really strange. All right, let's keep looking on the thermal. This may be difficult, short to find. Unless there's a short on a subrail that is connected to PP5V RS3. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing else on this board that's getting warm. Wait, what's this? Right here, what are you? What are you? You look suspicious. So right here, it looks like. Near the SMC. Ah, oh, this is a rabbit hole board. So I have to flip this board over. Give me one second here. Yeah, this board is really rabbit hole-ish. I think we'll fix it still. And this is what I think it is right here. So what does this do? Let's clip, clip this on ground again. Did that wire come off? And it's touching directly to ground. That is no good. Okay. So I'm going to put a little alcohol right here. Let's watch and wait to see what gets hot. Because there was somewhere right here. And it's really a, a real small short. It's nothing. And now it disappeared, which is really strange. Yeah, part this is partial shorts or nightmares because it, it may take a long time to get hot. But let's see, what does this chip over here do? So this chip right here has PM Sleep S4L. That's our Bluetooth. Which is even stranger. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. I'm going to have to let this get hot. First, I'm going to fix this wire over here so it's not all bent and kinked. Because that's no good for current consumption. But I don't want this to short either. And that's the hard part. Hmm. How can I position this so it won't short? I kind of want to put it right here because there's a lot of current going through this capacitor and that's seems like the best area to put it here I wa almost wonder if it's like PM Sleep S4L or something that's being partially shorted to ground that would make sense if it's something connected to that rail that is shorting it and that may be our case so I wonder what PM Sleep S4L is and that's really bizarre because I'm really surprised the CPU would even let the board turn on if PM Sleep S4L was shorted partially because that is a real finicky rail. And if almost always, if you have a short, that's going to be pulled down to nothing instantly. Because the, the CPU is not made to send out current like that. And there's no short there. Okay, let's do this again. Better connection on ground here. Okay. And now I have to watch and wait. So instantly I see something getting hot. No, the backlight driver? Really, the backlight driver? That, this board is just trolling me. How would the backlight driver do this? That makes zero sense. What 
That really does not make sense. Is it the backlight driver? Is it something near the backlight driver? Ah, is it one of these Thunderbolt caps? Alright, it's something in this area. I don't know what because... Let's, this cap looks a little bit off right here. Okay, I'm going to use freeze spray because this, I can't find what it is. It's something right here, and you know what, it's this cap. It's this little sucker right here. You know what, get off my board. Get off, get away. You trolled me, now you die a miserable death. That's what you get for trolling me, you die. Is it still getting warm? And it still is, okay. You still want to get warm? Now you're all going to die. Everything right here is going to die. Uh, it probably doesn't help I have that over there like that. But let's just get rid of all of this stuff. If it wants to troll me, it can all go bye-bye. Everything. This had junk under it. Don't even not even tell me the backlight driver can screw a CPU V core, because that would be a first. That would be a first. Okay, let me put a little power on the board. And current draw is down. It was something right here. It's probably the darn how could the backlight driver do that? That makes zero sense. And I honestly think that's what was getting hot originally. Now the real question is, do we get CPU V core? So we have a lot of stuff removed. It's nothing essential, though. Stuff, everything could go without, except the backlight driver. We'll put the backlight driver back on. We'll put Thunderbolt back on and all that stuff. But let's see if this turns on properly and gives us V core. So let's check and see what our resistance is right here first. So we're going to measure in ohms again. And... Are you still low? Are you still low, little board? Five, six hundred ohms. That's still trash. What is going on? That is still trash. It's like one thing after another with this board. What the heck? Okay, let's turn it on. Let's see if we get V-Core. Let's just see if we get V-Core. So if we plug it in, does the fan do the same thing? Spin, little fan. And it does. What is our 1V5SO, whatever that is? Still zero. Still zero. Okay, now this is getting annoying. So there's still something partially shorted on here. There's still something partially shorted on here. But we've removed practically everything. Let's just get rid of this junk here. So we gained, a, it was definitely something here, but there's definitely something else going on. So we had, what is this gunk here? It's like hardened. We had 100 ohms, and then now we have 500 ohms, but 500 ohms is still a little bit too low. Which is really, really strange. And it could be literally anything on this rail. I, I don't think it's a CPU, though. The C it would really surprise me. It could still be the CPU. Something wrong in the PCH, but I don't really think so. I think this is more of a circuit issue somewhere that's just trolling us really, really hard. Alright, yeah, so we're on 560 ohms still. So, back to injecting voltage. 
back to looking to see what gets hot. We may have to let, um, let the board sit with voltage on it for a little bit to see what gets warm, but it may take a while, especially if, the, if it's just a partial short, which it is. Yeah, partial shorts are the worst. Okay, our wire soldered again. Let's plug in our alligator clip right over here. All right. Now we wait. And I'm going to let the board sit for a good amount of time, about two to three minutes, and let's see what gets hot after that. All right, I've left the board plugged into the power supply, um, injecting voltage on that line. Current draws was steady. There is nothing getting hot on it. The only thing that's getting warm is the PP3B42 regulator because voltage is feeding back through the circuit and causing it to do its job, basically. So now we're at the least, my least favorite part of this. So now we have to just start plucking stuff and see what it does. So the first thing I'm going to pluck is the regulator for this chip. So that is going to be for this rail. So PP5V um, S4 RS3 should be... Yeah, I believe that oh, this is going to be using U7501 for the output. Let's look here. So U7501. Um, where's U7501? Let's pull up the schematic for this. Okay, switch to display capture. Okay, so U7501. Let's see, where is it? It's somewhere here. I know it is anyway. At least I thought it was. Yeah, right here. S4 RS3 is going to come from uh, U7501. So what we're going to do, let's remove U U7501 and let's go from there. So this may be it, may not be it, but we're going to see because it will right now we just have a partial short somewhere. Another thing to note, the CPU was cold, so I don't think it's a CPU issue. But something is screwed up on, on this board. All right, let's measure one more time. So we're going to measure at the same place right over here. And it looks like our short is gone. What is it now? Is it gone? Okay, so what is that? No, that's not gone yet. That's still around 500 ohms, so it was not that. Let me double check on the working board again what I had in ohms there, because I forgot. Because that's a good reference. Okay, sh I should have about... Okay, so I should have like 13 kilo ohms. So we still have a problem here. So if it's not that, if it's not the main regulator, double check one more time here. Okay, let's remove this cap. Just start taking off everything that is on this rail, which is really not going to be fun. So you're going to get out of here. Get out of here. Check it again. It could be anything that's leaking or partially shorted. And it was not that. So let's see what else is here. Go back to the board view. We know it's not U7600 because I replaced that. It could be over here. You Now this area over here, I believe, had some liquid. So it could be this chip right here that, yeah, I knocked off a cap right here. So this had liquid. It could be this. So this is the next, uh, next thing to go. So this is the next thing on the chopping block here. Let's get rid of you.
check again. Measure over here. Maybe that was it, because that had a corroded cap right by it. Nope, okay. We're in the kilo ohms, we're at two kilo ohms. And going up, we're climbing. So two kilo ohms and climbing. I think that was it. I think that might have been it. Let's see. I don't know what the range is, and I know the range, the, yep, we're good, we're good, we're, yeah, we're perfect now, so we're at 10, over 10 kilo ohms, I think, now, let's see, no, we're at 2, okay, that's better, that's definitely better, so that's an improvement, what else, what else in this area looks messed up, so, that cap, yeah, that's good, though, that's under, underfill, um, what about on this side? How does U seventy U forty six hundred look? So U forty six hundred is over here, and that looks fine. Um, this big cap right there looks fine. These caps look fine. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put that back on, and let's see if we get. I'm going to put a new regulator on. I'm not going to reuse the old one. Why reuse a you know, 15 cent chip when you don't have to. I'm going to put a new chip on right here and uh, we're going to go from there and see if the resistance goes up or down. If we put something um, here and it goes back down, maybe this chip is uh, completing a circuit of, the of what is shorted, so we will see. Clean up all this old junk here. Put a little bit of new flux down. Grab our new chip. Well, sort of new chip. I cannot really say this chip is new. If you look at it. I'll come back for that cap. Let's just see. And I, yeah, I'm probably going to get rid of that chip. That thing looks too ugly to, for me to put on that board. Let's see if our short came back. If our short came back, that would suggest there's something that chip is... Uh, connecting to to complete the circuit and nope it still appears gone it's still two kilo ohms is still okay we're climbing two kilo ohms and climbing that's still a little tad low for my touch but I'll take it I'll take it it's not perfect but I'll take it let's grab a better donor board because this one looks too ugly for me to trust I mean that chip functionally is probably fine but yeah I'd rather not I take a chance. I don't want something to short, then come back, and then the customer's angry and doesn't trust you and wants a refund. I don't want to go through that, so I'd rather just replace it.
we could very well still have an issue on this rail. The way everything kind of went out on this rail kind of leads me to think it took a spike. That's typically um, how a spike will... Uh, screwed that up. How a, a spike is going to present itself is with a bunch of random, compo random components that have failed on the same rail. Um... So let's go ahead and put our reg on right now for nice yellow flux, a lot of rosin in this stuff. Grab a new chip of our donor board. I have to say, this is one of the strangest board repairs I've had in a while. Just the fact that everything on the rail is screwed up. And it still is a little bit low, so... But we've gone through almost everything. Come on, go in place. You're not in place. No, align yourself, little chip. Don't make my soldering look bad. And you did. Bad chip. TPS 51980 does not like me. Now we'll touch up these pins. It's a little off, but eh, it'll it'll work. It'll work. Maybe I'll adjust it. Yeah, my OCD cannot have that. After I clean up all this junk, I will push it back a little bit. Yeah, I cannot have a chip that's soldered crooked. Nope, not here chip must look like factory. When I get someone's work and I see a chip that's soldered on like that, I instant think that, you know, what is this person doing? Leaving a crooked chip on the board. You know, what's up with that? I don't want my work to be like that. I've gotten some 
I've had a warranty job that I've worked on a year ago back when I was, or two years ago when I was starting. And I see this stuff that just soldered so bad. Like, what moron messed with this? And then I realized, oh, wait. Yeah, I know what moron did that. This is gonna get ultrasonic again. Yeah, this board is an overall mess. Anything else important that we need? Yeah, I better put this cap back. I don't want to cause U seventy six hundred to melt down and kill our CPU. Good enough. All right, let's check resistance one more time. Back in the kilo ohms. Now let's see if we get all this power good assertion and board power up. So let's plug it back in. What a troll of a board. What a troll. I yeah, this was this was a troll of a board. You gonna go fast right away? Are you gonna give me V core? You're gonna give me nothing? MacBook. What's up with that? Oh yeah, the fan connector is broken on this board too. Let's see what V core is. Nothing. Our CPU is burning. Hey, 1.05 volts and CPU V-Core. 1.8 volts on CPU V-Core, but our fan isn't spinning because the dumb connector looks like this. It's broken off the board because probably me turning the board over to measure stuff. So let's look at this on the oscilloscope, and I will show you that the board is now switching properly on P1DFSO. Okay, if you remember earlier in the video, I showed what the um, outputs for uh, PP1V05SO was on both a good board and a bad board. So, this is our bad board, and after the work, I'm going to plug this in. Now, this board has a little, has me a little bit weary, since the drop um, could have damage in the CPU. So, I'm going to check that. Um, but this is our coil, which be relatively normal. See how it's switching? This is normal. This is all good here. Nice good switches there. If we look at the bigger graph, we see we're all good. So this is switching normally in the sports. At least I think it's fixed. Let's put it in the enclosure and let's see if it boots. Okay, it's in the enclosure now. And what is that app logo? Fixed.